So it's time for um, part two of my pantry tour. This time we're gonna go for dry things. Um, and I'll show you in my kitchen. I figured I could give you a quick tour of my kitchen as well. Um, we are gonna get it renoed and pulled out in the coming weeks. And I'm so excited. So when we moved in, this kitchen had been uh, renovated like four years before or six years before maybe I can't remember but um, it was done on like a budget and all of the appliances are basically broken off fridge freezer is like wrecked it just doesn't work and the oven only works on one side um, if you follow me on Instagram you'll know I had such a huge palaver with that over Christmas because we were hosting and it was a nightmare ended up pretty much doing the whole Christmas lunch in an air fryer uh, and it took like eight hours <laughs> uh, but luckily everyone was quite drunk by the time we put the food on the table so like even if it tasted like shit we got away with it i'll start with like a mini mini tour so let's do it it's also really dark in my kitchen um i do most of my shooting over there by the window um but yeah so hang on so I've turned on the lights for you, but this is what we're working with. And I mean, it is a nice kitchen from afar. It looks really great. Um, it's not particularly our style. It's a little bit too modern. Um, but then there's like this, the laminate is like, firstly, it's all cracked and coming up here. And then that's been ruined. And like the splashback is like wrecked as well. I didn't have a fridge door. So when we moved in, it was just like this bit. And then we bought this island and it's been such a savior because it means we've got like a breakfast bar and then there's some more storage under here. It's so one thing that's really annoying about this kitchen is there's only three drawers. And I hate cupboard storage with a passion. So in these corner cupboards is where I keep my dry stuff. It's a bit of a mess in here, so don't judge me. And then because I'm quite short, I put all my spices in a box uh, so I can just pull it out and then I've got all my spices in one place and I don't have to like faff around like trying to reach to the back of the cupboard. Set you down her. There is a lot of stuff here. <sighs> okay, so I said we would do it in three parts. I think we have to do four because there is a lot of stuff here that we have to go through. This is quite good as well, because it's gonna kind of force me to reorganize um, my cupboards when I put everything back. I think we're gonna have to do it in four parts because if I get the oils out, it will just, we'll be here all day. And we don't need that. Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so we have loads of tahini. This is one of our favorite brands. It's the Balazu Authentic. Um, I don't know, how do I get that to, yeah. It's the Balazu, Balazu? Balazu Authentic. Um, and we have like three of these because Cameron goes through tahini like nobody's business. And we don't have, our closest shop is a Tesco and they don't sell this one there. They sell a really crappy, uh, it comes out of a jar and it's like all the, all the supermarket owned brands ones are like that and they're just not great. This is the best, or if you can get the ones that come in like a, a gold pot with a green lid, that's genuinely liquid gold. So, and then I've got a bunch of these Jim Gymkhana sauces and they sent me these and I actually did like an ad with them and I cannot praise these high enough. Jim Gymkhana is a Michelin star restaurant in Central and the Indian food and we tried the Goan curry and it was genuinely one of the best curries I've ever made so if you love a curry but you don't like making it from scratch I cannot recommend them more. A little bit on the pricey side but worth it. And then I've got like a collection of um, hot sauces here. These ones are all fermented miso chili sauce. This is Novice Kitchen if you don't follow him on Instagram you should. He makes great hot sauces. And then this is Lou's Original Hot Sauce. I haven't opened any of these because I've got a few open in the fridge already and I made a promise to myself because I have such a small fridge. Although, when we get our kitchen renovation, we're gonna get one of those big American fridges. Oh, I cannot wait. So then I'll open all my hot sauces and just have everything in the fridge. But for now, because of space, I have to save. And then going further on from hot sauces, I've got two of my favorite crispy chili oils here. This one was, it's called Karanchi, not your mama's chili oil, love that. They sent me this and they sent me two jars and I'm so grateful because it is genuinely one of the best chili crisps I've ever had. But this is amazing, it's so, so crispy. Um, it's obviously quite spicy because it's chili oil, 
Um, but yeah, it's 10, 10. Like when I finish these, I will definitely be buying them again because they are amazing. Just so good drizzled on vegetables or rice or even beans. I made a recipe today using it. Um, which I will be revealing at some point, so keep an eye out for it. And then this one, this is the one that I've been using before. This is good. I would say this is like a seven out of 10, and this is like a nine, 9.5 out of 10. This one is from my neighbors, The Dumplings, and it's a chili oil, and you can find that in Whole Foods. I don't know where this one is retailed, but um, I, I can find out and let you know. And then, oh, okay, here. So I have shawarma paste, which is something that you would have seen in my fridge door. Uh, I just have extra because like I said, we only have a big Tesco near us and this is from Waitrose and I really love it. And I think I also have a chipotle paste and their shawarma paste is some of the best in my opinion. They're just really good. And I haven't actually found a shawarma paste that's as good as this one. The chipotle paste, um, Tesco's own brand actually do quite a good chipotle paste, but the Waitrose one is better. So whenever I go to Waitrose, I like stock up and then just have it in my uh, in my cupboards for a rainy day. Um, and then I always have these things, which are kind of like meze style. This one is Queen Piri Piri stuffed olives, and they're just so good to have if you get like guests around and like you've got a couple of these lurking in the back of your fridge, fridge, fridge or cupboard even. This is a spicy green tapenade, and this is chickpeas in like a tomato sauce. Quite good to just put these in bowls, some crisps, some nuts, maybe like some pizza bread or laffa bread or whatever. Uh, and it's just like makes makes life a little bit easier because sometimes you don't always want to be making like fresh hummus and fresh tapenade. Olives are always a must. I always have olives somewhere in my fridge or, or cupboard. Okay, and then I have like backups for when I run out of things. Sauerkraut, love sauerkraut, kimchi. And then, and then this was just like a caramelized onion chutney. You know those things you get in like a Christmas hamper and stunning, I'll take it. And then I have here, which I just actually just bought this today, which is Jamaican jerk seasoning. I have, as well the powder version of it um and they're both from i know they're not this is dunn's river and this is tropical sun this one's won the great taste awards so if you see that sign there it says great taste i don't know if this is in focus or not because i'm quite blind but i hope it is but that great taste awards little sign is such a good thing to look out for like you see here it's on the tahini as well great taste it kind of if you're looking at a few options of the same thing and you, one of them has the great taste award go for that one because it means it's it's gonna taste good like anyway this is jamaican jerk and I've, I've got loads of carlin peas in my cupboard and i want to make like a jamaican jerk pea style curry i'm not very familiar with Car caribbean food and i like i just I love, I, every time I have it, I really enjoy it, but I never really, what's the word? Like explore with it? Experiment with it in the kitchen. Bisto gravy, absolute win. I know people probably look at me and think like, why have you got gravy granules? But honestly, these are such a lifesaver. I'm plant-based, so I don't eat meat and making a meat gravy is very easy because you can use all of the, the drippings from the meat. But if you're gonna make a, a vegan or vegetarian gravy, it's fucking hard work and it takes a like half day or maybe even two days. Um, so having Bisto gravy granules on hand is a must for me because I'm from the north, I love chips and gravy, although I like dipping my chips in the gravy, I don't like the gravy on the chips, don't like a soggy chip. And also, as a vegetarian or vegan, um, if you're making like a bolognese or a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie using lentils or vegetables or soy mints, adding a teaspoon of this kind of helps thicken the sauce that you would normally get from the gelatinous parts of the meat that you're using, like the fatty bits that usually fit, like thickens the sauce, but you don't get that with vegetables or lentils. This will thicken the sauce and it also just gives you kind of a meaty flavor. So it's a really good tip. I learned that um, a while ago and it was the biggest game changer. And then breadcrumbs, love breadcrumbs, put them on everything. Um, although I rarely use these ones. Normally I would just use panko and I have some panko breadcrumbs, but they're not down here, but you don't need to see them. All of my spices, I feel like we don't need to go through all of these, but these are just all of my like bog standard. We've got like oregano, caraway seeds, ras al hanu, cayenne. Uh, like, I feel like I just said some really um, quite random ones and not bog standard. It was just the first ones that came to mind. It was like cumin and ground coriander, turmeric. Got onion and 
garlic granules, um, like cloves, sumac, all of that kind of stuff. Sumac is an interesting one. If you've never tried sumac before, it's really lovely. It's a red berry that's got quite a lemony flavor. So worth a, sh worth a try. I also always buy my spices in these. Uh, the East End bags. I feel like they taste better. They're better value for money. And then I just fill up like these with them. Like these are really old, the actual cases. And I just refill them with the bags. This is so good. The Truffle Guys Truffle Dust. That on like a sprinkle of pizza or pasta is just divine. If you like truffle, I am a slut for truffle. I love it. Oh, so good. Yeah, the Truffle Guys know where it's at and then i have loads of these little miso soup things from itsu love itsu and i love these easy miso soups because sometimes i want like something really salty but i don't want like a full meal and i love these as a, a little snack Ducker, really really great to have again it's like a mixture of spices herbs and seeds and it's wonderful sprinkled on top of like roasted veg uh, with a bit of tahini it adds a lovely texture and crunch and then I've got this, which was made its rounds like a year or two ago. Um, and it's called, oh my God, I can't remember what it's, oh, Yondu, it's great. Um, it's basically just like very, very, very salty. It's kind of like vegetable stock, but really concentrated. Yeah. Uh, and I would use it in place of a stock cube and it just adds again like a depth of flavor Which is really useful to have just to like build flavors when you're veggie or vegan and then furthering on from that These are stock cubes. So that one is like a mushroom flavor stock cube and then this is the OXO vegan Beef stock cube, which I use in like bolognese's shepherd's pies cottage pies that kind of thing and then the mushroom one I would do as well in like a mushroom pasta or uh anything that has mushrooms in it and then finally ooh, bagel seasoning which i got this from america because i love everything but the bagel seasoning i love having it on toast with avocado or tomatoes um or even just like cream cheese it's so good when i go to la next month i best believe i will be bringing back a lot of these so i've literally been testing recipes all day today and i actually feel so pooped but it's valentine's day happy valentine's day we're going to the cinema tonight cameron's bought me some really really beautiful flowers um and we're gonna go and watch poor things which i hear is amazing so i'm really excited for that um i've been recipe testing all day so i've just got loads of like random dishes that don't really go together but we'll have those for dinner uh and then loads of popcorn i love sweet ah do you know what? I like sweet and salt popcorn. I don't like it from the cinema. The Tesco own brown sweet and salt popcorn is really, really nice, but I love salty popcorn and I love salty popcorn from the cinema because I feel like it's saltier than I would allow myself to make it at home. Um, but I also love having pick and mix and I also love having chocolate. I'm really annoying in the cinema because I'm that person who's just like yamming all of the loud, like crunchy sweets and stuff like that. But listen, I'm there to have fun, so. Anyway, I'm rambling now, but thanks for coming back for part two of the pantry store. And I will see you next week for oils and possibly grains and pulses. Can't wait. See you next week.